Now at 9.45 this morning's Sunday worship. It's introduced from Peterborough Cathedral by the Dean, the very Reverend Randolph Wise. Welcome to Peterborough Cathedral. Our cathedral is 750 years old and we've just been rejoicing in that celebration. But the city, really, although it began on that ancient base, the city is a new town. And so here we have all kinds of new things happening, a great new shopping centre, little townships where people from other parts of the country have come to live, and you can get to London within the hour if British Rail's on time. So really, it's a very th thriving place and full of activity. This morning's service is really uh, the Holy Communion service, but we also have the service of light, and we have a confirmation. And the person being confirmed is Nicholas Stevens, who is a catering manager with one of our insurance companies. Presiding over the service, we have our bishop, the Right Reverend William Westwood. His diocese includes the whole of Northamptonshire, Rutland, and what we call the old soak of Peterborough. So people from all over the diocese have come to represent those parishes. We also have our regular cathedral congregation, and together they're assembling in this place to celebrate this solemn service. We begin with the quiet and solemn part, the lighting of the Easter candle. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this most holy day in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members to gather in prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which through word and sacrament we share in his victory over death. Let us pray that through this Easter celebration, God may bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Eternal God, who made this most holy day to shine with the brightness of your one true light, set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. All time belongs to him, and all ages. To him be glory through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. 
by his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ our Lord guard and keep us. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise you, the unseen God, the Father Almighty, 
and your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has ransomed us by his death and paid for us the price of Adam's sin. For this is the Passover of that true Lamb of God, by whose blood the homes of all the faithful are hallowed and protected. This is the day when of old you saved our fathers, delivering the people of Israel from their slavery and leading them dry shod through the sea. This is the day when Jesus Christ vanquished hell and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the day when all who believe in him are freed from sin and restored to grace and holiness. Most blessed of all days, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away, lost innocence regained, and mourning turned to joy. Day truly blessed, when heaven is wedded to earth and all creation reconciled to God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this day, accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering, and grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light, for Christ the morning star has risen, never again to set, and is alive and reigns forever and ever.
and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, beginning at the third verse. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. For if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel is written in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. But on the 
first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Spirit. Amen. One of the Jewish hymns, the Psalms, begins with these words and they really contain the heart of the Easter message. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? We are met together inside this cathedral to celebrate Easter. This cathedral is a place where we frequently have occasions of celebration. Indeed, at the heart of the city of Peterborough, this is our centre of celebration. But no occasion is greater than Easter Day when we proclaim that Jesus Christ is alive. As the first disciples learned, we do not seek the living among the dead, for Jesus Christ has been raised from death to give us life and light. We rejoice. We've gathered together inside a cathedral 750 years old to sing the gospel trumpets tell of victory won. But the celebration is not for insiders alone. We are specially conscious of this because this morning television has made it possible for people outside the cathedral to join our celebration. We welcome you all and especially those who may be confined by sickness or frailty in the homes and hospitals beyond the walls of Peterborough Cathedral's precinct. Living just next door to the cathedral as I do, I realize only too well that the gospel's message can only illuminate and invigorate the world by penetrating outside our walls. Our message goes out of the Norman arch into Cathedral Square, into the city, into the world. Inside and outside, upstairs and downstairs, the message goes out, the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. In some ways, we are living in very dark days. True, many of us do live in considerable comfort, supported by family, friends, and neighbors. For that, we are very thankful. But in Peterborough, last Wednesday, we learned how suddenly anxiety, sorrow, and bereavement can shake a community. A vehicle exploded here causing the death of the father of one of our choristers and injury to many more. There are also many who suffer continually through all kinds of deprivation, including loneliness, isolation, 
even just a feeling of being nobody. The world is broken by barriers of ignorance and misunderstanding which threaten to imprison us in darkness. To this dark world, Easter speaks of new life. Speaking from inside the community of faith, St. Paul wrote those words of our first reading this morning. He speaks of Christ as raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so that we might walk in newness of life. Newness of life. This is the gift offered to all inside and outside the walls. Christopher Columbus is said to have discovered a new world, but God in Christ has made a new world by transforming that criminal's cross into a sign of victory and life. The Church of God, the community of faith in Christ, is bound to be concerned for the poor, the weak and the powerless for whom Christ cared. The Church is also bound to remember the successful, the rich, the strong, the powerful, with their capacity to help in building a better world. The church works for change inside and outside to bring new life. True, the church itself does not possess the expertise to solve all the agonizing problems of the secular world, but it does have the faith to draw men out of darkness into light. Easter brings this new hope to displace old fears and hatreds so that you can do something about your quarrels and prejudices. Easter invites you to be ready to change and to be changed. Christ risen beckons us to walk with faith and confidence in our dark and broken world. So it is that Christians gathered together on Easter day speak with conviction of the gift which they share. We are sometimes suspicious of enthusiasm. To be enthusiastic can give the kiss of death to some causes. Yet the very word enthusiasm means being caught up by God. And it's scarcely surprising that we want to shout about the new possibilities of faith in Christ risen. Of course, there is sometimes a fine line to be drawn between enthusiasm and fanaticism. Fanaticism can destroy the very love, joy and peace which are the gifts of the Spirit. Yet God calls us to go forward with faith in our hearts and minds so that we may share Christ's creative work in the world. This morning our service has three parts. First there has been the service of light with the lighting of the Easter candle and the sharing of that light by all of us inside the walls. Second, there's to be the renewal of our baptismal vows together with the confirmation of Nicholas Robert Stevens reminding us all of the new life which comes through faith in Christ risen. Third, there's Holy Communion in which we share the life of the risen Lord under the signs of the bread and wine we receive. The service of light would have been more dramatic if we'd done it in the semi-darkness of the dawn. The women went to Jesus' tomb at first light, yet the Easter candle, now burning brightly, makes the point clear that Christ is the light of the world. He's passed over from death to life, from darkness to light, and this has taken place at the time of the Jewish Passover festival. When the bishop lit the candle, he said, May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. In the book of Genesis, at the creation, God said, Let there be light. So the candle puts before us light as the symbol of creation and recreation. We are made new by the light. The service of light has made us aware that Easter Day is the day of light and life, of hope and love, for Christ has been raised from darkness and death. Then, after this sermon, there follows the renewal of baptismal vows and the confirmation. 
To be baptized and confirmed is the way the church initiates people into membership. It's the way which involves us in an act of the will to make the new life our own. When babies are baptized, the act of the will is made on their behalf by godparents. And then later in life, the baptized people accept their responsibilities by confirmation. Nicholas Stevens is to do that today. To follow in Christ's way, to live a new life, means a relentless longing for truth. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The truth makes us free. So as we cope with the darkness and the shadows of living, we seek the truth in Christ to give us life and light. On Easter Day, we renew our promises to live in the light. Last, Holy Communion is the act of thanksgiving for Christ's victory over darkness so that we share the bread of life, the sign of his broken but now risen body. We are sharing in Holy Communion in the cathedral and so empowered we are ready to go outside to express Christ's light and love in the world. May all who are sharing this service with us go forward with faith and hope, drawing ever closer to the light of God's undying presence. The words of the psalm declare our Easter message. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom then shall I be afraid? Let us live in the light, let us live with the new life. Let us share the light and the life with the whole world. Amen. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery we have died and been buried with him in baptism, 
so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of the church. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore, I ask these questions. Do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. And now I ask you to make the profession of Christian faith into which you were baptized and in which you will live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I do believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind? I do believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? I do believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptized in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given your servant new birth in baptism by water and the Spirit, and have forgiven him all his sins. Let your Holy Spirit rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and inward strength, the Spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and let his delight be in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Confirm, O Lord, your servant Nicholas with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We say the great confirmation prayer. Defend, O Lord, your servant with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to everlasting kingdom. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. God our Father, we give you thanks that your Son, Jesus Christ, has been raised from the dead to give us new life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that your church throughout the world may be a sign of joy and hope to all people. We especially pray for our diocese, for William and Paul, our bishops, for all our parishes, and for this cathedral church. We pray for Nicholas Stevens, confirmed here today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for peace in the world and for understanding between the nations that all may share in the riches of your creation. 
we pray for wisdom in our trusteeship of all your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your blessing on our country, on Elizabeth, our Queen, and her ministers, and on all in public service, that all may work together for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who suffer from any cause, and for those who minister to them in our homes and hospitals. We remember the homeless and the hungry, the lonely and the unloved. We especially pray for those who were bereaved and injured in last Wednesday's disaster in our city. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the whole life of this city, for its civic life, its industry and commerce, and for all our schools, especially for the King's School. Lord, in your mercy. We commit to your keeping those whom we love but see no longer. We remember John Humphreys, who was killed last Wednesday. May they know the joy and light of Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that we may follow in the way of the saints, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Peter, Saint Paul, and Saint Andrew, that your name may be hallowed and your will be done. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia! The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Mrs. Mrs. Nicholas.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him, you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, 
and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we are remembering his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty. Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia!
They told what things were done and how the Lord was known to them in the breaking of bread. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in praise and glory. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.